addicted to war. Why the U.S. can't kick militarism. Our story begins on a Friday afternoon. Yeah, look at all the money the government took out of my paycheck. Later that evening. Mom, they want you to help at a bake sale so my school can buy toilet paper. First, no books, and now no toilet paper? Do they have anything at your school? At the next school board meeting. I'm sorry. The local tax base is declining, and we get very little help from the federal government. There's just no money. What do they do with all the taxes I pay? A huge part of the money the IRS takes out of our paychecks goes to support the military. Military spending adds up to more than half of the federal government's annual discretionary spending. No wonder there's no toilet paper. The United States maintains the largest and most powerful military in history. U.S. warships dominate the oceans. Its missiles and bombers can strike targets on every continent and hundreds of thousands of U.S. troops are stationed overseas. Every few years, the U.S. sends soldiers, warships, and warplanes to fight in distant countries. Many countries go to war, but the U.S. is unique in both the size and power of its military and its propensity to use it. The costs of being a military superpower and waging wars around the world are high. Because hundreds of billions of dollars are funneled to the Pentagon every year, the government skimps on providing for basic needs of people here at home. Let's roll. Cutbacks in social programs have caused far more devastation in this country than any foreign army ever has. But the costs of U.S. foreign wars are more than simply economic. They include the lives of the soldiers who never come home. Foreign wars also bring bloody retaliation against the U.S., such as the terrorist attacks that took the lives of thousands of people at the Pentagon and the World Trade Center. Despite the high costs in money and lives, the government seems determined to keep going to war, putting us all in harm's way. But why is the United States always getting into wars? To answer that, you have to understand the history of this country. Two centuries ago, the United States was a collection of 13 small colonies on the Atlantic coast of North America. Today, it dominates the globe in a way that even the most powerful of past empires could not have imagined. The path to world power has not been peaceful. I'll have to read up on this.